penis. As soon as it starts, too. <laughs> okay, I'd have expected that out of Bart. I'd have expected that out of Kyle. I would really not have expected that out of Trick. Really? No, no. You, you've done an excellent job selling well, your persona sad. as a reasonable Jeez. and normal human being. Uh, those exist. For, for those of you who missed it, uh, I just started the audio recording, and <laughs> Trix decided to yell penis. So... <laughs> that happened. I mean, what else do you do? Uh, why is it not picking up my face? Place, <laughs> nope. Not a one. Here we go. Pick up fancy grounds, throw it off to the side. Hell yeah. Everything's still working like it's supposed to. So, welcome back, everybody. It's been a month. Um, it's been two months. Two months. Two, two months. months. Those, those months. I'm looking over here from the camera. It's right here now. Um, everybody, Trix and Bart have, have moved, and they're still alive. So that's a good yeah. thing. Um, kind of. <laughs> the little hand wave from Trix. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, I'm moving in like two weeks. Don't do that to me. Granted, it's like 30 minutes up the road. So, so, I, can't, so I can't... <laughs> I won't be able to send you weird stuff anymore. Lord have mercy. Um, Correct. Is, you can move this, the person that moves into my apartment weird stuff. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> to whom it may concern. Here's this package. Uh, so, uh, I apologize for, for the delay in game times. And figure stuff out. If I sound weird, it's because I still have a little bit of sniffles going on. That's mostly just stuffiness. Uh, for those of you listening, I realize upon editing that I have done some uh, cheating as of lack of descriptors because I have pictures in Fantasy Grounds. I'm going to fix that going forward. I'm going to be more descriptive for everybody. It's going to be great. However, what we're going to do is I kind of I'm, I'm stealing an idea from Dungeons and Daddy. Shout out to that great podcast. If you ever listen to them, you probably should. Uh, if not, well, anyways, uh, we're going to start off with a fact. It's going to help flesh out everybody's character a little bit for background. It can be any particular thing about the character. It has to be about said character, though, to give them a little bit more oomph, a little more life. Also, hey, Safi. Um, yeah, so who has a fact they would like to start off with and set the tone for everybody else? Because let's be honest, you're the first one, you make a really amazing fact, then everybody else has got to compete. Uh or you just don't, and everybody else just there's only up to go from there. So, I think I think uh, who was it? Kadoma said he had a he had a really good fact for his character. Oh, we're starting with me. Okay. Um... Well, I mean, anybody else can go. I think you said you had one like in the pipe though. Like you were like, yeah, I, I think you guys really like this if I remember correctly. <laughs> I, I thought that I thought people would get a kick out of it. I don't know. Mm. I might get um, a kick out of it. All right. So Harbinger doesn't understand the concept of children. Um, they're smaller. They can get fit into tighter spaces than adults. They mm -hmm. they're faster. Their limbs don't like creak when they move. And, you know, they don't make weird noises when they get up from just like sitting down or crouching. So the fact that they spend their time playing with these pointless toys instead of, like, taking over the world doesn't make sense to him. I, I appreciate that. Who wants to go next? Who wants to follow that up? Um, I'll give a fact. Uh, a fact. Imani is in her autumn season. <laughs> Yes. Is why she's a little bit hungrier. Very like she's got like a lot of good feelings about everybody. She's really kind, maybe a little bit overly friendly with people. That's my fact. We got it. We got it. autumn season. Who's fall of autumn season? I think it's Voff. Voff's down there looking a little bit suspicious. I'm always looking suspicious. Um, I also completely forgot that this homework assignment was a thing. Um, I've, I've said it multiple times. That's I know you. you said it multiple times, so it just it just means that I'm a terrible human being for completely forgetting. Attention for boss. Uh, right. Yep. Um, <clears throat> okay. So, fun fact about Ilthos on the fly. Um, the right now, the only thing that's coming to mind as a fun fact for him is the the deity that is supposed to be 
connected to him somehow that I won't get into much further than because of spoiler reasons um, is actually partially based off of a long running D and D character I've had in another campaign. So the Ooh. idea is that campaign took place long enough ago that now this character has become a deity and has been a deity so long his true nature has been forgotten at time. So nice, which I'll need you to send that information to me so I can uh, get that in there as one of the minor deities. Also, uh, let's say Crow says this sounds like they're starting an interview for a job. Just want you all to know. A rogue Trix. No, Trix, Trix isn't a rogue, Chup. Trix is a druid. Uh, Trix is Source Rex. Oh, no. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Chup is referencing a message in my Discord. Ooh. Yeah. I see. I see. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it has a completely different meaning with you. Hi, Chup. All right, Bard, hit me. Hi. It is hilarious. <clears throat> right, so Give me your really, best. Really, it's a really important fact. Um, oh, really? Hey, so Ambrose Simon Starfall hasn't slept with a halfling yet. <laughs> now I don't feel so bad about I, my fact. <laughs> I, I, I feel like every week we're just going to expand on... What he hasn't, who he hasn't slept with yet. That, I've that, never, not, I have never months. seen Kyle that defeated before. You said one interesting fact. You never said what it had to be about. And it's very interesting. It's, 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 it's interesting. interesting. So why did you come at us with yeah. that? It's it's expanding your backstory. I, I feel like we really need to actually define the word interesting going forward. <laughs> That's great. So, like, oh dragons would be more interesting. <laughs> um, we just started. We just started. <laughs> yeah, and? Thanks, Chup. Chup says they can't stay and to enjoy uh, D&D friends. Later, Chup. All right. Um, let's... We're just going to gloss over that last part. We're going to... Um, <clears throat> <laughs> A brief rundown of what happened uh, last session is we made some friends. We made uh, a friend with a chest. His name is Chest. He's way back there at the beginning. Uh, he's, he's stacking copper coins because he wants to have the tallest one. He wants to have more copper coins than Harbinger. It was a thing. He went through. I believe there was some looting involved, some sticking weird things into holes that you weren't supposed to in order to try to get items. Uh... A little bit of murder. I don't know if you call it murder. There was a um, a gazer, which is like a mini beholder, except it doesn't have beholder powers, and some Niyogi. Harbinger knows about the Niyogi. Uh, the gazer is known by Imani because she has uh, beholder problems in her, her backstory in life. And then we found a couple more friends. We have Frank and Reed. Does anybody remember who Frank and Reed is? Because yes! one of you has uh, yes. one of you has Frank on their body, and the other one has Reed with them. Uh, and I believe we ended off last session with a brain in a jar, finally getting some rest and getting its brain flakes before Harbinger triggered a trap and got hit with a whole bunch of snowballs from Snillix Snowstorm, which uh, he is looking a little frosty right now. He is actually, I believe he is lower health. Yeah, so he has 11 wounds out of 19 health, so he has 8 health points left from that uh, fiasco. <coughs> so we'll pick up right there. <clears throat> He's standing right there. He just got pelted. There are some dents in him because apparently these snowballs aren't like regular snowballs. They're packed with ice because they're that kind of person that's running them. Uh, yeah, so you all just watched him. vindictive DM. Hmm. Yes. You saw him. He just walked up hit the trap it's just and it just he drops he gets back up a little rough worse for wear covered in snow and you guys are just standing there looking at this robot well not really a robot but i guess close enough that's just completely covered any, any anything you'd like to do with that or you just want to continue trudging forward do i look good you look fantastic. Honestly, now, you look pretty good. Your condition, that might be a different different discussion. 
The snow kind of adds like a shininess <laughs> to you. It's... Also, <laughs> I'm glad that wasn't me. <laughs> yeah, he takes a lot more stuff to the face than just that. Um... <laughs> wow. Um, well, on before Tuesday. we move on, I, I think I've got a couple potions of healing on me. I, one of those would probably be a good idea. Yes. Uh, so how I, I've worked this is if you have a whole action you're going to use for the potion, you can get the max out the potion. But if you're like in combat and you're trying to like bonus action, take a swig off it or the free action, then you have to roll for it. It's it's a, basically time allowing for the potion to work, kind of kind of fiasco. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, what so, would your potion normally heal you for? Should be uh, if you click the little uh, square far off, right? Two uh, d four plus two hit points. So that would be a total of ten. So all you do is you would go okay. to your main tab under wounds, click wounds, and then just. You'll subtract it and, and then we're down punch to one. the real number. Yep. So you click it, press one. There you go. You got it. I got it. And then inventory. That's <clears> one <throat> potion of healing left. All right. We're good. Cool, cool. All right. So we have our path northward leading towards hopefully the violet fungus because this is where the brain said that it would be. You all, uh, however, have no idea besides that's where they said to go. Who who's you know, gonna go first? You know he didn't. Uh, Mister Brain in a jar didn't mention the traps. So does anybody? Yeah, probably because point? we didn't ask him about it. Uh, probably because we didn't ask him. You're so helpful. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> Fine. I want to look for traps. If there's more than just the one. <clears throat> All right. Uh, so what I would need you to do is roll an either investigation or perception. Perception. That's not a good roll to start the session off with. Nope. Uh, you roll a 10 and you see no traps. The only thing that you saw is enough. is the snowballs. They got triggered. However, that's on, that's on Harbinger. You have no idea where they came from. You're like, yeah, that magic snowball. That's 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 normal. Is there enough snow on the ground for me to make a snowball? Uh, there is enough that is pelted from Harbinger of magical snow. It's just kind of chilling on the ground. Yes. Uh, 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 chilling. <clears throat> I'm gonna um, buff, make buff. a snowball okay. and then ch and so chuck it at the uh, at Iltos and say, "Hey, catch!" <laughs> uh, roll, roll the hit. It's fine. Oh, yay. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Uh, where is that? Um, they can be any range attack you have. for the second time, <laughs> Ambrose decides to attack the team. Yes. What? I'm telling you guys, the bard's a liability. So you, uh, you have the I dagger with the range. bomb. It's at the bomb. The bomb means oh. thrown, so you can just click that uh, plus four. Okay. And that is a <laughs> nat 20 <laughs> plus four what? for 24. Uh, so be his best roll this whole stream. I don't believe he packed any ice in it. He just said he made the snow into a snowball. So there is no damage. But <laughs> Ilthos... Are you kidding me? Isn't that uh, the first nat 20 of the campaign, too? I, I believe so. Is. I believe so. It absolutely is. The first, the first somebody with a snowball. of the campaign I is to it. throw a snowball. So are you, it here. are you pelting his face or are you pelting his gut? Uh... <laughs> So can I like get it in his mouth like when he turns yes. to like say nat, something? Nat Nat twenty, he just poof in his mouth. He, his oh, head just hey Elthos. And he and he like opens his mouth and it's just like twink, yeah. twink. <laughs> his head just like jerks back and just oh. You look thirsty. Alright, I'm gonna walk this way. Oh my god. <laughs> thirsty as you are, motherfucker. Ooh. Ooh, them fighting words. <laughs> Somebody tell me I'm wrong. <laughs> uh, I mean, do you want to say anything else that's like not fast? But okay. Uh, <laughs> all right. So I'm going to keep walking forward because I, I assume I'm, I don't see yep. anything. I'm looking around. I'm observing. Okay. So far, everything's uh, everything's safe. Nothing's uh, nothing's standing out. Nothing's jumping at you. Yeah, it looks pretty good, guys. Uh, you. 
in all through here, as you're walking along, the, the walls are kind of like crumbled in. You see like there was a turn for a hallway into a door, but the whole side's just caved in on the left. Uh, it's not much going on until you get up to what looks like a small uh, chapel altar. Oh, yeah. And uh, sitting atop it, <laughs> is, it's, this one is it's currently pristine. It's like everything fell around this. Maybe the deity who oversaw this place just kind of like set this out to the side. Or maybe, you know, natural formations just said, hey, we're going to fall the rocks here, here, and leave this alone. There's a little slight layer of dust. There is a vial on the, the altar as well as two jars. That's all you can see from this distance. There are like little cobwebs here and there. Is there like a statue to some god? I'm no. sorry, but I'm morally obligated to ask what's so vile about it. Okay, I'm going to stop for the DM. I'm sorry, who hates giant it here? Of you. <clears throat> Sh should have uh. thrown something better than a snowball. Maybe like the, the dagger. Um <laughs> But uh, yeah, so dusty, pristine altar. It's made out of what appears to be black granite slabs. There's the red cloth, as you can see, like draped off of it, like the little stairway coming up to it. Uh, you're not sure whether this was at one point in time, the cloth was on top of it and then it fell off, uh, but it is just kind of laying in front. It's uh, everything, however, it seems pristine, just a layer of dust. Um, is uh, this circular thing on the map, is that supposed to be something, or is that just a, like a column holding it, up the it, it's, a, it's like a column. Everything else kind of collapsing around it. That might be why this thing is still in pristine condition, because it's the only place that seems to have support. Uh, <laughs> so, um, does it look like like it's like as, some type of uh, god or something? It's, it's an altar. There's no real god on it. It might be related to the god of death still. Uh, because, I mean, you did see that down here prior. Uh, it looks like this is where they, they kind of, like, set up stuff for... What, what would it be? Like, blessing items before people were interned to their final resting place, more or less. Uh, you know, things to send with them to the next life. And there are three items on top of it. A simple vial with some clear liquid in it. And two jars with labels. And they are kind of dusty, so you can't really see into them right off the bat. Can, can I see what the... the read the label? Uh, if you would like to turn them and see the label, yes, you may. Do you touch so them? It, do I have to turn them or to see the label? I mean, you, you, can, you can walk around it. Uh, the first one is labeled Ocular Beetle. The second one is labeled Aural Magnet. Uh, maggot. Uh, I don't like any of them. Ocular, so it's ocular beetle and arm maggot. What? <laughs> no oral. Right? A oral. Oral, yeah, like ear. Yeah. Like oral. <laughs> Listen, I'm standing Here. next to the biggest Honey. ear maggot of all time. A U R. <clears throat> there you go. Anyway, I put it <laughs> put it in the chat. <laughs> okay. Um, and if you look into the jar, oral. like yeah. Like okay. if you if you rub the the dust off for the beetle, you see it has it's a beetle, but on the back of its carapace, it looks like a, like a fancy. Well, I wouldn't say fancy. It looks like a, a like a, a runic inscription of like an eye or an artist rendition of an eye. And the maggot has uh, it's well long dad jokes for days. Chug chug. Yes, yeah, Saffy. Um, the maggot itself has a bulbous tail end that seems like it's just enough to plug a small hole. <clears throat> I just had an idea that I'm not getting into on stream. Anyway, um, what's, uh, what, what uh, role would I need to make to see if I'm familiar with the use of these particular creatures? Um, I would say an arcana or history. Your choice. Yeah, it rolls at advantage if you know anything about like the underdark. Unfortunately, I don't think my character has any reason to have studied that. Nineteen. All right. Uh, based off of this with Arcana, 
Uh, you know that there are some magical critters out there besides just like the big spooky ones. Uh, these being a couple of them that have been manipulated by not really scientists, but wizards to help with certain things. Uh, ocular beetles can replace eyes and have uh, magical effects when uh, used. And RL magnets go in one of your ears and can be used for listening in on conversation that one would not normally know. It's more of a, a magical um, translator device on that end, so you can understand, uh, while the beetle is more magical sight. I'm out. <clears throat> Seriously, Babelfish. <laughs> so no, it's an act, so they're, they're telling actually actual things for Underdark. Um, you just have to sacrifice a part of you to use them. Hmm. And what's in the what's in the vial? Do we have any idea? Of, it's uh... it's just a simple, clear vial of some type of water, like liquid. Sacrifices ears. He don't need them. Says creepy. <clears throat> um, and the vial doesn't have any kind of label on it. Nope. Just a simple vial of a clear liquid. Um, Mister hey, uh, Mister Book, do you know what this is? If uh, so, the book is no longer active. You're talking to Frank the Inkling. Frank. That's one. Yeah, that's on Iltho's body. If you want to read the scroll, that's uh, Harbinger me. has them. Yeah. Can yeah. we ask the, the, the scroll and the inkling if they have any idea about this? Also, what is this? I, I don't know if they'll this is talk. I kind of like pull my sleeve up and <laughs> so that way the. Um, <laughs> the sorry, what did we say? The Frank, Frank was the. Yeah. yeah. So the that way Frank can just like go down on my arm and just like create a you know, tattoo on my. On my arm or something to be yeah. and i pull a reed out of my backpack as you pull it out of the backpack he's like oh yeah i was getting a good sleep what do you want <laughs> this shit looks spooky <laughs> what no. is this <laughs> yeah it's fucking <clears throat> weird man have you have you seen me do you know my lack of a body he motions to himself with like his tail end of his scroll you yeah. want to talk about freaky? We can talk about freaky. I have an ear on part of my page, and he like flicks it over at you. Uh, the ear yeah. doesn't come off. He just flicks like the page in your direction. Well, no, well, yeah, <laughs> but but this is other stuff. Like like I think this is like an ear that you could have. There's an ear somewhere, yeah. and he just kind of like looks around. <laughs> Isn't that what this is? I'm pointing at the. The weird maggot that, thing that that goes in your ear. I'm gonna I'm gonna pick up the vial and just kind of like cut to the chase and be like, do either of you gentlemen know what this is? What might be in this vial? Uh, the inkling comes up, looks like a little uh, amorphous blob of a snake, like a snake without any features, and like all of a sudden it forms like one little eyeball, like a bloop bloop out of ink, <laughs> blinks. And then it, it sinks back down into your arm, and it just writes out "Holy Water?" question mark. Hmm. That's your uh, that's your best guess on that, or it, it's it's it, it it then writes out in like more fine script. No, I know that's holy water. I am putting that question mark as a rhetorical question. <laughs> Period. <laughs> Okay, fair enough. <laughs> okay. Well, I'll just kind of like scroll it away in my backpack for now. Because um, obviously I don't see any immediate need for holy water. But uh, Did anything like change or like click when he picked it up? Nope. Everything just worked out perfectly fine. Okay. <laughs> uh, then I'll pick up the other two things and be like, well, like, free shit. I guess this thing goes into holes. That seems up my alley. I'm gonna put it in my bag. Um, and <laughs> then I'm gonna put the other one in my bag too. Like, unless somebody else wants to hold on to this thing. Is it mm -hmm. possible for us to get around behind the altar? Or can we even see it? <coughs> oh yeah, you can go around behind it. Okay. 
Yeah, yeah, you can see. So like the edges there, they're kind of just like a sloped thing. Okay. So it's well, it's as... stuff's collapsed in. You just kind of. Yeah. Do you know? Do you know anything about these these vials? Uh, you never told us what you. <laughs> oh yeah. Sorry. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, sorry. Yeah. The uh, the inkling said that it's uh, holy water, which I have a. <clears throat> in spite of being a, a fairly religious individual, I don't actually know a whole lot about holy water. But you know what? It's fine. It, it is useful against creatures and creepy crawlies and, and stuff. Other just, things. But just trust me on this one. We'll keep it around. We'll find a use for it. They um. Salad. So, for the oral maggot and the ocular beetle, does. It said it has that label like on the outside of the bottle, yep. right? Yep. Well, on the so outside, it, of the, it, like, the jar. Boop, boop. Is this like a one-time thing? Like, if you choose to take it, or is this like like does it last forever after you take it, or is it like? So they does it functionally. Have, like, a time limit? They functionally replace part of your body. If uh, yeah. if El Elthos tells you. Um, so like the ocular the ocular beetle you'll still be able to use your eye normally like so like you have to remove your eye put that in place and then you can still see normally once it connects quote unquote but there are other benefits to having it same thing like you still be able to hear but you're sacrificing the physical part so if it's ever removed after the fact you don't just get your eyeball back it's gone same thing as if like the aural maggot was removed you would then lose hearing on that one side what does the ocular beetle do again? Uh, so, uh, from what Ilthos knows with that role, is yeah. it allows you to have a certain magical sights. However, you do not know it until you will put it in what exactly you have, or somebody takes the time to research or play with the magics. This is just what he knows at a glance. This seems like a permanent thing that we should... I'll like. put the bug in my ear. Why yeah, I think I'd, I'd, I'd hesitate before we do any of this hokey well, I don't want to hesitate, stuff. So. She, you, 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 she doesn't yeah. hesitate, so you pop it open, you pull out the maggot, and it starts to wriggle and just squirm, and you're like, okay, bottoms up, and then you just throw it into your ear. Is that what I'm hearing? Hell yeah. Give me a constitution <laughs> saving roll, uh, DC 15. <laughs> well, this would be fun, I'm going to watch. Uh, uh. That's a that's a check, but that I'll take that. That was a eighteen plus two because same thing for you. Uh, yeah, you don't you hear it? It's like squirrely, and then you feel it bite into like your eardrum and start to to crunch and munch as it sits in there. Anybody who's looking from the outside can see the the tail starting to wiggle until it like plugs in, and all of a sudden it's fine again. Like you can hear normally out your ear. There's a little bit of pressure that seems to like fade as it slips into place, and now you feel like if you listen to somebody hard enough or like pay like focus on them you can understand what they're saying you basically get a three casts of comprehend languages at will throughout the day to uh understand what somebody is saying regardless Fucking of awesome. language yeah babel fish he's giving up an eye <coughs> <clears throat> Why are we standing I, around well, here? These are like, I, I, like free special I, powers. I think we're <laughs> gonna wait until somebody's well, accidental mutilation for, for that. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna give you uh, the the I trait think. of Arl Maggot. Uh, 3x per day. Cast. Well, all right. Listen. First off, I don't know how. Like, I pointed at Harbinger and be like, I don't know how well this thing works for him. I'm not about to give up an eye, and something tells me this That's one wouldn't even want to give up a pinky, much less an eyeball, okay? Well, you get to see magical science, <laughs> maybe. There's a reference science. to an old, uh, old episode. Anyway. <laughs> we see through I understood materials. that reference. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm on. I agree. However, this thing is like deep, dark, under dark things. Okay. I'll right? give up wait, an eye too then. Wait, 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 hold on. Hold Nobody on. else wants it. She's she's like, just give it to me. It's fucking free shit. I don't know what y'all's problem is. <laughs> like, holy shit. This is she, like the real 
Okay. <laughs> she's walking around with half. She's walking around with half of a gravitational armor set, throwing in bugs for replacing body parts. She's all about this. <laughs> all right. So <laughs> number one, it's like that we found. Right boss where they give you all the free shit that means i'm right. the baddest coming Listen, guys i played enough games two, i, I was gonna say two things are, like, number one we just found a brand new uh channel point redeem for somebody probably trix's channel if she ever comes back <laughs> to stream it. number two i have just figured out which one of the five of us is the most likely to have problems with inventory space when playing skyrim hey, don't hey, ask hey, me how hey, i know hey, that hey, hey whoa, whoa whoa she's she's in her well, autumn season relax <laughs> Now if you go into console, <laughs> I don't have any issues, Bob. <laughs> yeah, just, you know, it's fine, it's fine. Wait, I, 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 I am, okay, so I actually would like to do, like, an insight check or something. Um, for I, I, for I want, what? I, I want to determine that this thing, it's, like, kind of like an abomination, right? If it's, like, on it's, you. That's a magical so, beetle. Right. My mm -hmm. question is... If I were thinking, you know, so the gods that are not related to the Underdark dark are really pretty. Um, and Have you they seen probably... Lilith? She's pretty great, except for the spider bottom. Okay. Well, yeah, but that's that's a whole different... That, that, that's like a Wednesday type of thing. Um, yeah, for everyone. So... <laughs> Takes all kinds. But what I'm asking is, is, do I think that if I altered myself in this way, gods that are like not you know it's like humans could be generally okay with most gods but then having like some monster part with that uh, ruin, so ruin, basically ruin you're trying chances. to figure out if putting that re replacing your eye with this beetle would lower your chances of getting laid by a god that's what you're okay. yeah. trying to figure uh, out uh, yeah you roll you roll roll the inside it, sir well i, I wanted to uh, you, you feel like it's like getting tattoos. Some would be like, oh, that's hardcore. Some just won't care. And some would be like, oh my god, why would you do that? I might hand the eye over to her. It's like, nah, this this isn't going to go with my plans. Let's go. Does anybody stop her? I got a village to save. No, no, nobody stop I'm her? Just, I'm just I mean, kind of like, I'm, I'm just collecting my way data back right now. <laughs> I'm, I'm, my, way back I'm just observing. <clears throat> uh, the only I'm not telling y'all any shit after i, I would like to point my out, body vibes i'm not telling you anything amani amani i would like to point out that if this doesn't go well and you lose eyesight temporarily that i'll still have one help. eye uh, do you have to, do you need depth perception to use like your kidneys. abilities what do i need depth perception i don't i don't know i'm a druid are, are you i'll just turn into an animal yeah there you right. go uh <laughs> So now, I'm also mentally making a note like I need to find an artificer to buy like a, a better, you know, artificial yeah. eye for Imani later on down the road. Uh, so how 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 are you proceeding with the beetle? You're just taking it out like put it up but next to your eye or like how how would you like to proceed to replace that eye and which eye would you replace? Hobinja, do you think you can make this a little less painful? I don't know, maybe you can like laser it out or something laser it out yeah are you that kind of oh my robot? god just because he's a robot is doesn't a robot, mean he has is lasers robot like the PC term? <laughs> you gotta remember you gotta remember she went to college with the clock okay she can't be racist okay that's fair <laughs> i remember that my, my roommate <laughs> in college was a clock <laughs> no had that's a, a good clock. point all right <laughs> No, you people <laughs> <laughs> and here we go <laughs> right back to where we were it's okay harbinger i'm offended for you <laughs> 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 i'm gonna put this up on my twitter <laughs> all right continue I i'm sorry i really think my compass will dull the pain I could try smacking you with it a couple times if you want to test. Anyone have any spoons? <laughs> Jesus Christ! Oh. <laughs> I mean, no. I, 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 I have. I, I pull out my dagger. I have this. <laughs> 
The really sad thing is I have a it, tiny perpetually hot coal, but it can't even cauterize the wound because it does not burn skin. Ah, shit. I, all I got is a dagger. Oh, well, and a rapier. Well, well, fun, rapier. fun fact, if you've ever seen an eyeball pop out of its socket, it doesn't bleed. So... Mm. It just kind of chills in there, and there's a muscle behind it. So, uh, so how how would how would you like to do this? Are you gonna have somebody try to remove yes. it for you, or are you gonna do it yourself? Yeah. Wait, Ilthos. It's a significantly I think it would higher go cleaner if uh, somebody held me down and someone else scooped it out. I look over at the altar. There, there's. I'm still trying to comprehend that this is a, an well, action we're actually. Not only considering, but moving Someone forward else? with. You're, yeah, you're a robot. You won't feel any pain, right? You guys. Okay. All right. All right. Hold it. I, I, Ilthos, Ilthos. You have Mage Hand, correct? I saw you with the, the torch. Uh, so you could, like, use the Mage Hand to, like, get in there and just twist real quick? <laughs> Listen, if you guys are going to be mutilating yourself, I want no part of that. I'm, I'm going to just keep on trying to find the fungus so we can get the hell out of here. Uh, All right, dagger All right. it is. All right, lay on down, Mommy. Let's so, go. I'm, so I'm going to gesture up. towards the altar. Like, here you go. So, so Monty gets up on the altar, lays down. Operating table Did is... Also with the death goddess. Uh, um, I'm going to pull out some rope and be like, I can... I've got experience with this. <coughs> oh, God damn. Um, <laughs> do you want me to tie you down while we're pulling your eyeball out? They don't have a spoon, creepy. Everyone's safety. Okay, I'm going to start. Um, <laughs> Slide of, of hand, see how good you tie her up. Are there any chalices close by? Maybe that would. Come work. on. Eight, 16. You, you I've got a sock she could bite down on. If, if we could keep her eye open, I'll have some it'd be easier just I to try to pluck it out. So, uh, she's tied up. How, who? What? What? What of our our next steps? She's laying there, tied up. She's trying to get the eyeball removed from her. Just It'll do it fast. Sure. Just do it fast. Hand, please. That's probably going to be the fastest way to do this, and the least likely to. I, I need to know how this this. Impromptu surgery is going. Uh, uh, well, dagger, dagger. If the ill da is dagger, not, dagger. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm down for it. If somebody wants to mutilate themselves, I'll help them do it safely. All right. Imani, I need you to give me another Constitution saving throw of DC 15. Harbinger, can you hold her? Just on extra. This is just to see if uh, you maintain this without damage. Over her and hold her down. Uh, Minus, it was a 15 minus 3 for a constitution. Hold on, how's it a minus 3 right now? I could have swore it was a... Isn't it a plus 2? It was plus 2. It looks like she accidentally clicked something prior to. Let me fix this. Uh, it was... No. So that means it was a 15. Boom. I don't know what happened there, but we fixed it. So it would have been a plus 2 for 17. So you... you she, you see him take the dagger, and it's kind of real hard to keep your eye open, but he gets in there and pops it out. No damage to you because you didn't move or tweak. However, there is a, there is the ocular nerve that's attached to the back of the eyeball, and he just kind of sniffs that with the dagger real quick. There's like a wince of, of pain, but you've, you've been in fights before. And then uh, Harbinger, I'm assuming, has the beetle. Uh, just, just in my mind, Harbinger's like, okay, I'm ready, I'm waiting, I'm waiting, and drops a beetle on it, and then it crawls into the socket and starts burying its way in there. You can feel it, like, struggling in the, the small little pincer-like feet, <laughs> punching into the muscle behind as it, like, burrows down, and then attach itself to the back of the ocular nerve. And it's, it's a weird feeling for a moment, and then you blink, and then everything at first is black, and you're like, oh, no. This was a bad idea in the back of your mind, and then you give one more blink, and then everything clears up, and you can see normally. Everybody on the outside sees the back of the beetle, the the like runic eye drawing on its on its carapace, or the the what would you call it, the pattern on the beetle shell, more or less. Uh, it glows briefly, and then it has like a dull, dim glimmer to it, and you can see clearly. 
So once per day, you can activate it and have true sight up to 60 feet for an hour. True sight means you can see things that are in magically invisible, magic itself, you know, the whole nine yards. Doesn't matter. True sight sees everything. So, do with that what you will. Uh, I'm going to take the Does anyone else feel like tricks would just thrive in a cyberpunk environment? Yes. <laughs> I'm gonna take that. <laughs> now, listen, Tricks is that game, or is that person in a cyberpunk game where like there's the whole side quest about she's got so many mods, they're all like consuming her body. We've got to find something to stabilize her. Jeez. So yeah. far, there aren't any downsides. I just have to, you know, give up an ear yeah. and an eyeball. Well, but well, that's why you have two. Get back to town. That's, yeah, why that's, that's, two. that's why you have two. Um, I'm gonna take the eye that I pulled out, and then I'm gonna look down at Imani, and then I'm gonna set it on top of her and be like. I've got an eye on you. And then I'm going to start cutting. Okay, I'm, I'm turning around and I'm walking up the, <laughs> up the uh, pathway uh, because of that. Yeah, that was <clears throat> bad enough. I just Fine. silently turn around and start following Yothos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. hey, it was a good joke. This is like the one time this thing said, I don't know, I'm going to pick ropes off. Like, well, and, and I'm going to be like, you want to keep this? I'm going to enter the eye. Souvenir? I'm gonna like slow down as I as I get to the entrance of this room and like look around and see hey what's going on in here. All right, so with this room, uh, it's a it looks like a general all purpose kind of like crypt and storage. Uh, over on the there's like a, a grate in the floor. You can see where they kind of like put less than desirable fluids and stuff down, be it blood stuff like that. There's some splatters, some uh, like hooks and things for carrying stuff. There's a couple uh, what are they called? Sarcophagi and a frog. Uh, and they all have what looks to be like uh, a violet fungus. Just kind of like wrapped around on them. Just chilling there. So I'll see the it's an excessive amount. So both oh, sarcophagi, uh the frog, and the, the grate all have this fungus kind of like <laughs> growing on it. What is this frog? What is it? It is a statue of a frog. I guess I have magic sight now. Uh, have you never I'm heard of Benny, the <clears throat> steadfast companion of the god of death? Oh, that's precious. I Please make that going... canon. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> Benny the tree I'm frog, to... carpenter of death. That is canon now. <laughs> Yep, that's canon now. <laughs> the god of death has Benny the tree for a hook. <laughs> Kyle's super enthused about it. I, it's, it's amazing. <laughs> okay, I'm going to uh, step up to this first uh, sarcophagi, sarcophagus. I, and, I like to prepare um, an action. <laughs> yes. I'd like to prepare a vicious mockery. For, okay. I, I've sketched out by the hooks and the blood and <laughs> the fact that nothing has tried to hurt us yet. Um, <laughs> Are you kidding? The, the fungus you, is totally going to jump up and you? and attack us here in just a second. What? No. Uh, no. Never. Yeah. But it is one of all the stuff. So do you, uh, do you uh, go? Let's see. Yeah. I'm going to pull out one of the daggers that I have, and I'm going yeah. to just kind of like poke at the at the fungus, like standing far enough away that like I can. Get my arm back and hopefully jump back out of out uh, of range. Congrats, roll initiative. I'm stroking Yay! my nose. The frog, as you stroke his nose, you, you you brush oh, against no. the fungus by accident and it just kind of plow. And <laughs> God damn it, Elthos! Uh, so hey, we all knew this was coming, okay? The the, the violet fungus, uh, as you can see, I will go ahead and share the image for you all, and I will also. Let everybody else at home know as it is a, it looks first kind of like a mossy thing and then it coalesces all together into one large, uh, looks almost like the top of a troll's hair. Um, it's, it's a very mm -hmm. pointy or, or like a, like a scorpion stinger with tentacles coming out of it as it, it merges into a mushroom like shape and it starts trying to whip in the direction of the stimuli, uh, it's very porous for those of you who have, uh, what is it, 
trip tryptophobia, the fear of holes in your hands and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah, it's got like that thing kind of going on throughout <laughs> its whole entire that, form. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not sure the name of it, but anyways, roll initiative, everybody. Yeah. Wait, Ted. Also, uh, may I just say this guy looks like a uh, entertaining inter individual. The frog. No, no, the 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 uh, fungus looks like it uh, could be a. Oh yeah. <clears throat> Uh, a fun great at raves guy um anyway huh <laughs> i'm gonna need you to stop on a scale of one to ten i need you to stop did, did, okay hold on did imani and harbinger just both roll nat 20s on yeah. the initiative yes. Yes. We did. <laughs> hell yeah let's go uh so Dude, we have a plus initiative Plus two decks for him and plus two decks for you, so it doesn't matter who goes first there. Uh, I will say that the initiative on good. Yeah, I will say the initiative on the violet fungus are all negative three. So congrats, you all go before mm -hmm. the fungus. Sweet. <laughs> so um, we could have sneezed instead of action. rolling initiative and gone first. Okay. Yes. <laughs> it was just to see who goes first along you guys. Uh but yeah, Harbinger, it is your turn. Uh um, you see not only Ilthos poke a fungus, but Imani's over there like petting the statue of the frog, and it's just like, oh shit, we touched it. It's like, Wah! and just into one big mass as it's like starts flailing around, like, you fucking touched me, I'm gonna beat the shit out of you. Um, Benny's angry. <laughs> not Benny. Can what would you like to do? My, uh, <laughs> yes, what would you like to do with your prepared action? Uh, I did vicious mockery. Yeah, which one, though? There's four of them. Uh, well, the one that uh, Ilthos was poking, because that's the right. one I was like. Uh, so uh, you'll make sure you have yourself selected, and then Control-click on that fungus to target. Bow, bow. <clears throat> and then underneath Vicious Mockery, you should have um, the Wisdom save and the damage. So you click the save first. Uh, it fails. And then do the damage. What did you say to the fungus to wound it so for one point uh, of damage? <laughs> <laughs> I heard that you're actually not that fun. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Harbinger, what would you like I to do in your turn? <laughs> so with that barbarous jape, oof. Um, I think we're going to... I think we're gonna hit the one by Ilthos with Eldritch Blast. All right, so you'll click yourself and then control click the fungus. Go. Then actions, you'll click the little uh, spyglass next to Eldritch Blast. Click the attack button first, see if it hits. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Oh, there's the spyglass. All right. Yep. Magnifying glass, whichever. You click the attack yeah, button first. Uh, the attack there. Boom. And it hits. Great. Roll the demolish. Nice. It's well, a fungus. What armor class does it have? <laughs> <laughs> it comes up and it has full uh, yeah. chain mail. <laughs> I mean. Fully armored fungus. <laughs> exactly. Right at Armor Starts Friday. It, it was like right over a crypto. I don't know if it like came up through armor that was sitting on it. I mean, <laughs> and a, you lash your hand out after you hear that barbarous jab from uh, <laughs> from Ambrose as you cast out your purple lightning s force from the Eldritch Blast and just <laughs> right into it. And it kind of like ripples and freaks out. You see the tentacles. <laughs> As it's like you're not really sure. You don't think it's screaming per se, but you think the the brushing of the tentacles on one another is causing this screeching noise as it freaks out. It might be a little more uh, not like a carapace, but an external uh, covering, kind of like cricket or grasshoppers how they rub their legs together. You know, kind of that mm. thing is how it's making noises. Uh, is there anything else you'd like to do? You like to move? Or you're just gonna kind of stand back and just like I'm not touching that. Oh, oh, I think I learned my lesson from the snowballs. I'm gonna stand my ass back and let the others move first. <laughs> that sounds good. Uh, our <laughs> next up 
is our cyberpunk enthusiast Imani. New ear, new eyeball. New eyeball who dis. Yeah, new eyeball who dis. <laughs> You are standing here face to face with uh, uh, one of the fungus that just like brought itself together from atop this frog statue. Face to face, face to beetle. Face to face with the fungi on top of Benny the tree frog. Um, I want to use produce flame. Oh. Okay. Uh, so what you do? Uh, you'll control click the violet fungus. To target it and then produce flame you see a little spy glass to the right or magnifying glass yeah. next to the square click that and then you'll click the attack button first to see if it hits and it hits and then you click the damage button to do the damage you tell him Lola I'll put Lola in here <laughs> as uh, you produce flame and you just kind of like smack it across the the face with the fire in your hand and you see when you hit it with the fire it does a it does like ripple along its form like the the flame destroys part of the fungus which for those of you who see this mainly Amani as everybody else is concerned with one of the other fungus uh, if you finish one of these off by killing it with flames may not be the best thing if you're trying to save it but it's Imani. I mean, come on. You've already got like a ton of loot from down here. It's it's a fungus, whatever. Wait, we should be trying to save it? Uh, you are coming yeah. down here to collect fungus. Yes. Oh, yeah. If you, if you kill the fungus so with it. fire, it's going to die. Like it's gone, gone. Oh, I forgot. <laughs> yeah, so so when you so it's fine for this one. You just <laughs> pow, pow, you smack it with the flame. I think the maggot like ate some membranes while it was in here. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, is there anything else you'd like to do, or well, are you just kind of like at a standoff but, with it? I mean, shit. I don't know how. how re- I'm just gonna stay at a standoff. I'm gonna wait for other people to come up with ideas for how to harvest this stuff. So yeah. Sounds good. Ilthos, you are now face to face with this fungus. Uh, Ambrose just yelled some slurs at it. Harbinger just <laughs> hit it with a. <laughs> Hit with the Eldritch Blast right in front of you. It just whizzed by you. And then you saw Imani just fire in the hand and just boom across one of them. Uh, mm-hmm. You're standing right next to it. What would you like to do? Um, because I've already got my uh, dagger in hand and was kind of like yes. poking at it, I'm just going to flip my dagger around and just stab down on it. Go for it. And it hits. Roll that damage. That's 16. Let's see it. Hit it, hit it, hit it, hit um, it. There we go. As you do two damage, as you just kind of like slash <clears throat> down into it and take off like a little sprig of it, just kind of bloop, bloop, flops over. Anything else you'd like to do? Uh, Only you can engage. To... It, um, is, <clears throat> is that little sprig of it um, mm-hmm. like still wriggling around, or would that be safe for me to like grab and? Shove in the backpack. Uh, uh, you you can grab and shove in the backpack. It like wriggles for a second, and then it just kind of flops over limp. Okay, well, I'm gonna grab it and, and shove it in the backpack. I just I, I would assume that would be like my bonus action for the round. Yep, it's a free action to interact with an item. Okay, so you still tell uh, you have a, you would have your bonus action still free actions separate from bonus, so you okay. can interact with an item for free. Um, I think. Just remember, if you do try to move, you, since you already used an action to attack, you do not have a disengage, and you would take an attack of opportunity. Right. Um, I, I think I will just stay right where I am. Because um, okay. I don't really have a whole lot of ranged options outside of Firebolt, which we just agreed is a bad idea. Yes. Yes. I mean, it's not a bad idea as long as you save one, but if you destroy everything, well, then it's gone. Right. And you don't... But basically, you, all these things are loot. Is what I heard. Basically, yeah. I mean, you're supposed to come down here and collect <clears throat> for for the guy, right? Wait. So since the one on the frog is wounded, can I like collect it now? Or uh, no, you it's... burned it. So he cut he cut a chunk off with the with a knife. <clears throat> you 
burned it with fire. You burn it with fire, it's gone. Toasted. Yeah. No, but Toasted. it says it, I thought it said it was wounded. So it's still alive. Yeah, so 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 it's still alive, but the parts you burned on it though Gosh, are gone. He when he attacked it with a, a knife, cut off a chunk. It wounded it, but he separated a portion off of it. <clears throat> so you got like, a little spray even... from it. I mean, technically, the shop owner never said he wouldn't accept it with a little smoky flavor. So, well, so so from a from a DM's point though, if you kill them with fire, I'm, I'm, the fire's I, gonna I fizzle it out. I'm just, I get it, I get it. I'm just letting you know. <laughs> so as long as so as long as it does the kill shot isn't with fire. Yeah, as long as the kill shot isn't with fire, Maybe you I will have like try to upsell the guy. <laughs> I've or smoked just, it for you. Okay. <laughs> you. You could just stab it too. <laughs> Reburn. Yeah. Ambrose Simon Starfall the second. Good old ASS two. <laughs> Let's uh. <clears throat> um. All right. Uh, uh. Can I see the one that's over at um the the front? Yes, you can see all of them. Okay. Um, then I am going What's to... What's up, Keith? Stoneface <laughs> Miyagi, three months, baby! I'm going to cast... Uh... How do I... There, oh, so, yeah, there you go. <clears throat> so you're targeting number four, which is the one yeah. in front of Imani. Yeah, because the one in front of Ilthos has, should have a disadvantage. So, from, from Vicious Mockery, right? Uh, Vicious Mockery doesn't impose disadvantage. Oh, it did say, um, uh, do, 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 do. yeah, just psychic damage. <laughs> disadvantage on the next attack roll. So, yeah, you're right. You're right. <laughs> I was like, that's, it, I was trying I to figure out what disadvantage of... you were talking about. So, I was just, <laughs> confused for a moment. You're good. I got it. I was like, I was like, that's how I do like 1d4 damage. That the whole point is, <laughs> <laughs> the whole point is that it gets confused. Um, okay, well, then I would just save. Come on! <laughs> nat 20, it succeeds. So if I'm correct with the nat 20 uh, versus your Vicious Mockery, uh, let's see. On a... On a it must you know, wisdom saving throw or take 1d4. Okay, so yeah, nothing happens to it. You just yell insult. Let's hear that insult. What, what, was, uh, what was your Vicious Mockery? Your, your jake? Well... You know, I, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna like start to say stuff, but I'm gonna like for, be like, ah, yeah, I don't know. If no, 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 no. Hey, no, I got you. The reason it fails is because the insult he goes with is, "Man, Last of Us wasn't that good anyway." No, I take it back. That game was fantastic. <laughs> and it has no idea what meta knowledge is, so nothing happens. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to move anywhere? You're just gonna like hang right there, just kind of like feel bad about the the lack of a good jab. Uh, Think about what you did, you know. Um, uh, First time he's felt bad about lack of a good job. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <Is> Bart- <laughs> Jesus Christ. Is Bardic, ins- Bardic Inspiration is a bonus? <laughs> well, that was good. Uh, Bardic Inspiration is free, and you can give it to whomever. However, Harbinger, <laughs> Ilfos, and Imani still have inspiration that they have never used yet. Oh, so oh, they can wait, use that one. Does everyone have? Wait. So Look at the don't... stars. You don't have it. I think you used yours for something. I can't remember what it was, but you do not have it on your character right now. I'm going to try to like cheer myself up and be like, "It's all right. You got this. You got this. You yeah, got you, this." You, 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 you psych you're... yourself up and give yourself a bardic inspiration, <laughs> which uh, at your level is what is it? A D4 or a D6? Uh, I think it's probably a D4. I'm level uh, one, so it's probably. Uh, do do do. Creature gains one bardic inspiration die at D6. Oh, it's a D6. Ah. Yep. So uh, you can choose to use a D6 on any roll, attack, or save. Uh, yeah. Next up, Violet Fungus 1. As uh, it's going to see you hurling insults at its companions. And it's just going to move one little forward five feet. As it like pulls itself along, you see the, the roots pull mm-hmm. up out of the grate. And it just kind of like grabs and pulls itself forward. Uh, but they... Can't really um, go that fast. It's a fungus, you know. If you if you're expecting it to move rapidly, uh, it ain't happening. The yeah, next I one, quit. yeah, exactly. The next one, same thing. Violet fungus three is right there next to Ilthos. It is going to attack the person. Oops, who just cut a tendril off of it, 
and it has what is known as multi attack. Uh, it makes 1d4 rotting touch attacks. So, we're going to roll this d4. This is how many attacks it's going to be. So, uh, pray for a 1. It makes 2. So, the first attack is going to... Uh, well, so anybody knows about necrotic means you cannot heal. Uh, after you get hit by it. And it lowers your overall max hit points until a long rest is done. Uh, so, whoop. It Wait, says 12 hits. Disadvantage. Oh, disadvantage. Yep. So we'll do one more and just see if it fails. <laughs> uh, nope. Even at a disadvantage, it would still hit. Uh, because Ilthos's AC is only 11. Great. Missed oh, it by yeah. one. Yep. So the first go around is uh, three necrotic damage as it hits you, lash up the Bruh. table, and you feel the, the little roots from the... <clears throat> I guess it would be roots from the... Do, do fungus have roots? Or is it like something known as something else? I don't know. Anyways, it kind of like latches into your body and you feel like leech the life from you as it pulls. And you, you feel the, the sting of the spores being implanted into you. And then the second go round, because this is the next attack at disadvantage. So this one is at regular. Whoo, you were very close to a nat 20. That would have been bad. Mm -hmm. This is going to be bad anyway. No, yeah, no, it's not going to be bad. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and that would hit you with a, another two damage as it just lashed up another one. Just blah, blah, and you were kind of ready for it, but it still caught like <clears throat> your, the top of your hand, and you can feel like just rip the skin away from you. And then next up is uh, Violet Fungus Four. Is this going to like slowly scooch closer to Imani to get a <clears throat> good attack off on her? And we're going to do its D four for the multi attack. Pray for a one. No, it gets oh, four attacks on Imani. Uh, and it's succeeded, so this one is not a disadvantage. Uh, it misses with the first attack. Misses oh, with the second attack. You suck. She insults it, and it hits with the third. <laughs> for uh, six, six necrotic damage, as it just like lashes out with two open, <laughs> just whop, whop, as the roots dig into her. Uh, that one's a dirty 20 for a hit. <gasps> And another six, as you see it just leech into her, and Imani goes down. As it just, like, well, and shit. Uh, so, Imani, <laughs> Imani talks smack and got dropped. <laughs> Talk shit, get hit, bro. <clears throat> Tricks I think over. we reached the find out portion of the fuck around campaign. Oh, uh, okay. Harbinger, it's not your turn. You just oh. witnessed in the distance the one on the frog just whop, 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 and she's just dodging. Oh, you can't hit me. You can't touch me. And then it's just like, okay, fuck you. Bop, 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 bop. And then she just went from, oh, hey, to on the ground. Um, <laughs> and uh, she is laying there. Now, oh, what would you like to do with this information? <clears throat> well... <laughs> I am not a healer, so I think we focus on the task at hand. And you're not a Thanks, healer. Thanks, Harbinger. I appreciate it. Not a healer, but if you have a yeah. healing potion, you can use it to uh, to heal her. Which I potion? thought the healing didn't work. If you have yeah, a healing I potion, healing didn't work. Oh, that's deal, right. Yes. That's right. It's necrotic damage. I forgot. Yeah, uh -huh. no, she's down. You have to stabilize her, stabilize her. You can't, like, heal her for a while. Woo! That's rough. Well, they only moved five feet a turn. I didn't expect you guys to be up on them. Um, <laughs> it's a team full of yeah, magic people. What, what did I expect? It, it, you, I mean, you've you've campaigned with us before. You know our decisions are... I have not campaigned with you in Dungeons & Dragons the before. It is. A you put that frog Be there. Benny the tree. Me. Benny the tree frog is pretty cute. Um, yeah. What am I supposed to do? Yeah, we're gonna. <laughs> we're, we're still gonna Eldritch blast the one right in front of us because I don't want to get dropped like that. I don't know how it's gonna affect me, but I don't want to get dropped by like that. So. Hey, thanks for the follow, Mrs. Kadoma. Everyone loves mushrooms because they're such fun guys. Creepy, I'm going to need you to stop. Boff already made that joke. Y'all got to stop. You can't do this to me. <laughs> that hits. Hey. 
Look at that. <laughs> they only have an AC of five. They are a fungus. Yep. And bam, that better Boom. kill that one. Holy shit. That one just oh, explodes into a puff of spores in front of Ilfos. Just poof, and there's just like shrapnel of it everywhere. Okay, so we'll have to scrape that up later. Cool. Yeah, you, you can pick that up later. Yep. And I will remove this one from the combat for now. I leave a little green splat right there. That was that's dope. I didn't know that was a thing. Nice. Um, <laughs> so so for you, Imani, uh, I'm gonna offer this to you. Uh, well, at, this is after uh, Kadoma. Are you gonna move? You're gonna stay right there and just kind of like shoot from a distance. Um, I probably need to get closer to things, so I'll move towards Imani because you know okay. seems like the most relevant one next. Cool. Each square is five uh, feet. You have thirty feet of movement. So diagonal is five feet. I've been watching for like ten minutes and I don't get it. It's a board game and their characters were nerds. That's all you need to know. It, it's a complicated Th board game. That's basically it. I was gonna say, think yeah, about it this we way. We're we're playing pretend, but there's rules to it now. Yeah. That's that like right the there. easiest way to describe it. Yeah, you know, like when you were a kid and you picked up a stick and like all of a sudden it was a sword to you, same thing. It's Barbie it's Playhouse just, it's way with way violence and dice. Move there. Yeah. All right. I pointed over here because on, on my screen that's where the camera is, but I can't. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> my camera's right there, but everybody yep. else is over here. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, Ivani, I'm gonna offer this to you because it's gonna automatically roll for you anyway. Do you want the automatic rolls for your death saves count, or do you want to roll? What did you just ask me? I'm sorry. Uh, so when I click when I, when I click next, it's gonna go to your person. And then yes. it's going gonna, it's gonna to roll a death saving throw automatically. Do you yes. want the automatic rolls to count, or do you want to roll for yourself? If you get three failures, Can I use you're dead, my dead. Inspiration? I will let you use an inspiration on the roll. Okay. So do you want to roll for yeah, yourself? I'll roll for myself. All right, so this one, this one's not going to count, although that would have been great. Oh, uh, that, was, that, that was a success, so I'm going to undo that one. So go ahead, roll 2d20. So you can left click and then with, hold the dice. How do I do it with inspiration? It's All just right. two. Okay. Yeah, just roll two. So that first one, nope. And the second one is a nat. <laughs> so nat twenty means you auto. You're instantly all the saves count, and you are technically back up. Well, not back up. You are alive with one health point for the nat twenty. So oh, you you managed to stabilize yourself with the inspiration. Yeah, though. You're still unconscious. You're still laying there. They have to get to oh. you first, but but you're not dead. Yeah, which is good. Not Ilthos, dead. you're not dead. Okay, you're not dead yet. <laughs> not ideal, but I don't have too many other options. So <laughs> let me select myself. Target that. Uh, you are that right? I did that right. Excellent. Yes, I'm learning. You are. It's amazing. It's amazing. Okay. I'm going to cast a uh, firebolt. That Got hits. It. Cool. Boom. As you just watch out and you see like the majority of his body gets like all shriveled up from the fire. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, it is like shrieking and pulling back away from Imani because it is stimulus based. Uh, is there anything you'd like to do as you see it smoldering and smoking over there? Um, because Harbinger is on his way over there, I'm going to kind of take a, a step back from the coffin, and then I'm going to direct my attention to the other two that are coming in uh, at me and Bard. But didn't Harbinger just have his turn? Um, so, like, the fungus will get another turn to attack. Yes, but it's reactive. Okay. Yep. Right, but mm -hmm. uh, uh, I was going to say, un unless Bard clutches up, like there's nothing we can do about it because none of my abilities are uh, yeah. usable as a bonus okay. action. So, yeah, that's that's everything I can do on that front. Okay. All right, next up, <clears throat> ASS2. Come on, Asshat. Maybe I shouldn't call you Asshat. <laughs> I, I want you to save me, please, dear God. <laughs> it could, if it, oh, if I mean, it you did banish him to the basement, so... So Eric, okay, okay. I'm going to like think, and having seen it just hit that many times, 
I'm going to come to the realization that if it successfully hits four times on or three times on her, she's going to die. Yeah. Uh, be- <clears throat> so uh, you, yeah, all can- you know, you don't you don't know she's saved. So your character knows that she's technically down for the count right now behind the frog. I'm going to get right up on it. OK, let's just double check. Make sure the the, the distance is cool. Yeah, you're good. Yeah. I've, yeah. <clears throat> and I'm and I'm <clears throat> I'm gonna like get right up on top of it and I'm gonna use vicious mockery and I'm gonna just fucking scream at it so that it not mocking it, you're just freaking it out. Yeah, I'm just gonna be like, <laughs> You little fucking stupid I wanna speak to your manager. Go for it. You know why you can't be here? Because there's not, you know, much room here. Um <laughs> Go <for> Wow. <laughs> So you want to? You're already selected on it. Uh, go to town. Wisdom right. saving throw, and then damage if it hits. It fails. <laughs> yeah. That with that with that too, it's a twenty minus four because it's not smart. Yeah. It's. You do you do one. <laughs> oh shit! Oh, I just realized what I should be doing instead of this. But anyways, I'm going to do this. Ah, um, well, too late. Yeah. Um, I'm going to say, you know, <clears throat> you need to stop being such a fucking. Uh, yeah, it sucks because I just realized what happened. Um, I'm going to be, you know, I need you to stop being such a stalker. Um, and then. Oh, my God. Terrible. <laughs> can, I, can I pull pour acid on it? Uh, <laughs> no, because that would be an attack action, not a free action. Can't use Can't a bonus action. No, because that, they, you'd be attacking it. Like if you wanted to dump it on like an item, that's an item interaction. Yeah, but you're trying to hit a living thing, so you have to go against this AC, which is Dex and armor. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Next go around, Bart, totally. Bart, Bardic inspiration. Yeah, I should have just done that from the beginning. That would have been better. Bardic um, inspiration for what part? For uh, for Amani. Uh, you want to give her inspiration? Yes. Uh, she's down and out unconscious, but yeah, she you, you give her like she's she's having a weird dream right now. She's Damn like, oh, <laughs> somebody somebody believes in me, yeah, and she's just like having a you having either a great got, dream or a you bad. Just dream. got that eye, and you just got that ear, and you had <coughs> an opportunity to use them. You're not allowed to fucking die here. Beautiful. And you have a, a d6 of bardic inspiration to use whenever. Uh, this one is gonna keep moving. It's a little bit, just it's a little five. The next one, number two, is gonna like whoop whoop as they're just kind of like slowly dragging themselves along the floor. It's very creepy as Iltho sees them like slowly wake their way to him. Uh, number four is like, okay, this one's down. This other person just like screamed at me. Dune, go leave me alone, please, sir. Uh, <laughs> okay, perfect. That, that I'll take that. Yeah. As long as it's focusing Stop. on me, that's good. Uh, and it's going to make its attack. Let's see. Oh, it gets four attacks on Bard. Oh, no. Whew. Here we go. First and one. And there were two. In the arms for, of that one, angel bitch. That one misses. <laughs> that one hits. You called him a bitch. <laughs> oh. I don't give a shit. Actually, wait. That one. That would be the first one that completely misses because that, that Bardic Inspiration, or Vicious Mockery, did attack and work. So that was a disadvantage. Uh-huh. So that one misses. So the next one, second attack hits uh, as it re- lashes out and just whop whop for seven necrotic damage on you. Uh, yes. Second go around. Or third attack, I should say. Hits. Ooh, and last attack. Oh, that was so, oh so close to a nat 20. <laughs> so close to a nat 20. I held my breath. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Teetered. We're about to be here in the legend of Ambrose Simon Starfall the third. <laughs> Look, I just want to say that it would be it would be a very upsetting thing if I had to explain to all of the listeners at home how our entire party got killed by something that can only move five feet a turn and has a five AC. So legit, their armor class is five. I like if you lost to that, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> But that's its turn because it can't move. Our further. decision making tree is not ideal. Well, I, yeah, I what is think it? You would have a, the, a the, moral dilemma. 
it's not a moral dilemma. It's a it's a player dilemma. No morale. I need you to stop oh with the mushroom God. jokes. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? What is it? Vov said he's the smartest one in the group. We got problems. Yeah, catastrophic. That I'm is. the smartest one in the group. Do you understand how catastrophic that is? <laughs> Uh, no truer words have been uttered. Harbinger. It's now your turn. <clears throat> I think I'm going to do what I do best and blow up some fungus. Yes. Please. <laughs> I'm glad that it didn't. All righty. Oh, it. Hell yeah. Hits. That looked like a hit. Ooh. Oh yeah, and he you just come out and just throw out the hand, just poof. and then I feel <laughs> like you probably look at at Ambrose and you're like, did that make you feel excited, upset, <laughs> angry, or aroused? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Also, why why did I just uh, picture like? Any scene from any of the Iron Man movies of you know Harbinger just pulls us in. It does feel like that. It'd be just shooting out of my hand like Iron Man. That's how. That's how I feel. You're doing. You're just like pow, yeah. pow. <laughs> that's great. I love it. All right, Imani is uh, still unconscious. Uh, does anybody want to try to wake her up and and? and you know what? I'll let you wake yourself up. Uh, give me a DC 10 constitution roll, and you can wake up. I will do that for you. Oh, no, no. That's that's a... I need you to go to your main page. And underneath saves... Yeah, constitution, plus two. Plus Double click it. Skills. I, haven't, I haven't taken my five hands today. <laughs> it's okay. All right, yeah. we will let you wake I up. I left my listening ears at home. You I mean you you put a maggot in the uh, other year, you, so you, I mean you put a ma yeah you put a maggot in there so you know you're a little disoriented. <laughs> All right, so it would take you half your movement speed to stand up, but you're kind of back up on wobbly legs if you'd like to. You're just gonna lay there, and just gonna look at stuff. Um, I'm gonna stand up. All right, cool. So if you wanted to move anywhere, uh, it would be you only have 15 movement speed now as opposed to a full 30, because <clears throat> standing up takes half your movement speed. It's just more or less a time frame thing. Uh. So you're standing up, you're on wobbly legs, and you're looking around. That one that hits you is splattered everywhere. The one that was in front of Ilthos is splattered everywhere. Uh, and there's two more up north, just kind of like slowly dragging themselves along, just inching on, just rick, 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 rick. So can I? Yep, do you can an do action? anything. Yes. I can do entangle. It'll restrain one of them. Uh, can you? I don't know. Actually, no, you cannot. You have, you've used both up your spell slots Damn previously. It. So you only have Guidance and Produce Flame cantrips. Go team. Um, oh, Guidance. <laughs> I can do Guidance. You can give uh, your, who, who are you giving a D4 to? Um, Ilthos is next, right? So I will give a D4 to Ilthos. All right, normally you have to be closest. up close. Yeah, normally for, I believe, Guidance, you have to touch them, but I will let you do it at a distance. As you're just kind of like, I believe in you. <laughs> oh, no. I believe. No, yep, you, have, I you have to click him first. I did. No, you have to select him, control click. Oh, okay. And then effect. Did that work? Nope, no. it just puts it on I you. Did it's fine. Control click. It's fine. We, we'll, we'll, we know to, to, it's a D4. Why isn't control click working? Uh, it's because the effect. The effect is probably self. It's it's probably a, a spell yes. effect thing. We can mess with that later. Okay. Um, anyways, point being, Ilthos, on your next one, you get a you get a D four. Okay. Add it onto it. Cool. So Ilthos, your very next roll, we're gonna add a D four onto it. What would you like to do? Okay. The... I am gonna look at this uh, fungus that is closest to me. Yeah, this is kind of like inching along. Like and... I'm gonna get you. I'm yeah, going I'm to gonna, get you. like step back and get ready, um, like pull my hand up, like I'm about to throw something, but um, it's not the dagger in my hand. What I do is I cast ice knife, create a like an icicle, 
and throw that at the uh, at the Ooh. fungus. So Fucking frost mains, I swear to God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you'll find this is way better than Snowball ever was. It does more than pop snow globes. All right, let's see. So, oh, you know what? Let me let me do the super smart thing and that target was, it first. That was a critical, so the next your attack roll should be doubled. So go ahead. Just go ahead go, and roll the attack roll against. Them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah okay. the, the your damage roll, I should say. Okay, roll damage. And I will double that. So that was 10 damage on to yep. uh, Violet Fungus number one. Bow, bow. And then additionally, hit or miss, the shard then explodes the target and each creature within five feet, so just the target in this case, must succeed on a dexterity saving throw or take 2d6 cold damage. All right, um, so we're gonna, I'm going to roll the 2d6 here. Because it has no dexterity whatsoever. It is a plant. Uh, eight Perfect. as it just... You more or less freeze-dry well, this son of a I, bitch. I was going to say, do we want to just do it the easy way? Because I have dice to just roll the damage directly onto it. Oh, I uh, I, I, it, I, just put it in there. It's just dead. Okay. It's cool. eight. Ten plus Perfect. eight is 18. It only has 18 health. So Cool. As uh, you just hit it, it freeze-dries itself shot. more or less. And it just shatters into a whole bunch of dusty little ice chunks. You're not sure if that's good or bad. It's maybe preserved, as it were. Um, <laughs> Listen, at this point, it's dead, okay? <laughs> dead is dead. So, and then with my remaining action, I'm going to call out to the rest of them. <laughs> we need Harbinger to kill that one at range, <laughs> so that way we know we're getting something out of this. I don't want any <laughs> of us getting close to that one. Uh, Ambrose. <clears throat> okay, now it's remember the turn. thing you totally should have remembered to do before your last attack. Huh? No, I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> you are, um, you you are a little bit wobbly. You kind of feel like you and Amani are in the same boat right now. <laughs> nah, I'm fine. <laughs> I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm not drunk. You're drunk. <laughs> uh, I can drive I... home. I swear, I'm good. Well, I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be like, eh, what? What can you do? Uh, uh, fuck it. And I'm gonna just be like, would you just die already, please? It fails. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> and then I'm going to. Uh, ooh, how do we, why, why can't I do the opponent? Lord, <laughs> I'm just tired. Uh, you do one damage to it, and, and now it just kind of like if the committee is listening. My vote is Ambrose for MVP of this fight. Very much so. I'm gonna just be upset. These things just don't understand the true greatness. All right, I'm done. And... <laughs> I'm just gonna kind of like sit down <laughs> against the frock. What's going to happen now is, as everybody's having like a whole back and forth with what's going on, uh, Ilthos, from out of your, your, your sleeve, you see the inkling kind of poke out, look at what the hell's going on, and <laughs> it's going to look at that last fungus. And it's going to make an attack roll. As you see, it just kind of <laughs> from the front of it as like the ink like swells <clears throat> and then like a bubble bursts as a fireball a firebolt comes flying out of the inkling and just <laughs> right into this thing. It just literally just ripples fire all around it as it does seven damage to uh. it. Uh, <laughs> wait, wait, Damn wait. It. Ink, it, wait, don't do that. And the inkling just like like looks. Uh, it, does, it doesn't look at you. It just it just goes back to your hand. It just puts writes in good question mark. <laughs> I just kind of like <laughs> hold, hold up my other thumb and be like, "Yeah, you did great, buddy." <laughs> cool. Uh, the last fungus is gonna move five feet because it can't go that far, anyways. Uh, Harbinger, it's now your turn. You just witnessed the inkling pop out of uh, Ambrose's. Or not Ambrose's, Ilthos's sleeve and just 
fuck it up. All right, I'm going to make sure I'm in a decent range there, and then copy-paste last attack, last actions. <laughs> Are you kidding oh, me? It hits, it hits. It's a 5 AC, but oh, it was yeah, so yeah. close to the nat 20. So oh, close. Man. <laughs> <laughs> so close. A 10 hits. As uh, you do five damage to it, and it is looking worse for the wear. It's not dead yet, but it is not happy as like you blew like a chunk of it off and just went and smacked the wall behind us. Uh, Imani, you're up. You see the fireball, you see Harbinger, and you're like, damn. What would you like to do? Um... I'll give Altera and Ilthos again, I guess. <laughs> That's all I can do right now. I don't want to burn it. You can burn it. You have you have two that well, are technically useful. No. Don't do what it. do you mean I have two? Uh, the, two There's of the that. fungi are salvageable. One of them's frozen, so it may be salvageable. But it's like, it's money. This is the, what we're getting paid. This is where we okay. get our money is from this shit. True. Yeah. So alternatively, I'll give to again. I was gonna say alternatively, we're at enough range. We could just wait until it cycles back around to Kadama's turn, let him hit it with Eldritch Blast again, which will kill it without frying it. Because I don't think any of us have ranged abilities outside of firebolts at this point. So excuse me. Okay. Okay. Well, the, we'll, we'll wait till we've Boris's seen turn. your performance. I don't think any of us have ranged <laughs> abilities outside. Of Damn, I, I wasn't gonna go there, <laughs> but okay. <laughs> Kadama woke little, up and chose violence this morning. I couldn't resist. It may be a little inadequate, but it's, it, I, I can talk it to death. Are you going to lay a god with that? Okay. All right. All right. Uh, so Imani is just kind of like passing out guidance. Uh, Ilthos, she's hooked you up with another D4. Actually, uh, you, you know what? You know what? I am yeah, feeling like here's, here's a great moment to just completely and totally embarrass myself. I am going to the actual like physical dagger that I still have in my hand. I'm going to try yes. and throw it and horrifically miss. All right. Control click. Uh, yeah. Let's see. Quick. You I have my thumbs I believe up. In you. Yeah, you get a D4 Ooh. onto the attack roll. You don't need it, but you got it. All right. Cool. Um, and roll that. Boom, as you kill it, you just slice right through the middle of it. You hit you hit an internal stem and just like whoosh, and splits in two and it just falls limp. I'm just gonna like throw the dagger and then watch the thing fall apart and I'm like <laughs> I, I meant to do that. I, I totally knew that was gonna happen. <laughs> uh, okay. Okay. I'm gonna pick up the crap. We that need him we're alive. Why was that so difficult? <laughs> Why was it such a hard fight? It was fucking mushrooms. <laughs> Oh my gosh. They move one hey, square listen, turn. Anybody from the 80s can tell you mushrooms are going to fuck you up, okay? Oh my god. Yeah, this is true. I was going to say, true. kids, this this is a lesson. <laughs> don't do drugs. <laughs> this I'm is why you don't eat strange mushrooms. Gather all of the purple bullshit. You get the violet me. fungus. And uh, I will offer this to you all. Would you like to take a quick, I say quick, a, a long rest to kind of get your health back? Because you have to trek back through this place. And yeah. quite a few of you are not doing too well. And you're not going to be able to heal yourselves because of necrotic damage. <laughs> yeah, let's, uh, let's go ahead and uh, kind of set up base camp here. All right. Um, I will say there's... so. With this long rest, each of you also... If any also... of the party members look at me as they universally decide to do that, they'd almost swear I was smirking. <laughs> as you love, uh, uh, you all are going to level up in Kadoma. As you level up, you slowly gain more... Uh, you, you're learning, so you get more control over facial structure. So now, now you can actually manipulate your face and smile at them. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> nice. But yeah, we nice. were going to take a short break for this and what's going to happen now is each of you get two levels 